Hi everybody. Today we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration. We've got some pretty dirty, rusty steel with some mill scale, some oxidization, all sorts of nasty stuff that you really don't want. I'm going to show you guys why it's so important to clean your metal before welding. I'll be using this Yes Welder TIG 200P to do the welding today and we're going to use the TIG welding process. This TIG 200P has actually just been updated and now on yeswelder.com they have the TIG 200P Pro. This has square wave technology as well as adjustments you can make on your AC frequency among other new features. So make sure to check that out. But today we're going to use this. So the reason why we clean off all this metal before welding is because this rust and mill scale can create an oxidization layer that is really hard to break up in welding. It'll result in a decreased weld strength along with a plethora of a bunch of discontinuities and defects that can cause the weld to be pretty weak. The rust also diminishes the fusion properties of the metal, making it much harder to melt under heat. So if you just try to weld on mill scale, the weld may just lay on top. So I'm going to show you the two basic methods to clean metal. We've got hand cleaning and we've got power cleaning. In something like TIG welding, we're going to use both just to be safe. So on metal like this, we're going to have to use some sort of abrasive method. You could sit here with sandpaper and sand this all day, but we've got the benefit of electricity and power tools. I've got a grinder with a flap wheel and we can grind it up, we can clean it up that way. And then we've also got some chemicals that I'll show you how to use. But first, I want to show you what a weld looks like if you don't clean it right. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, and it stinks too. That's not a good smell. So you can see the contour is lost in the TIG weld, and there's all this crap that almost looks like slag covering the weld. No good. So you can kind of see the ends of the weld. We say all the time that this stuff should look like a broken file. That looks like that broken file had a lot of crap in it. You can see some dark spots, you can see some shiny areas, a whole bunch of porosity all along the bottom of the weld. And I got terrible fusion. I got all sorts of issues in this one. Right here, all along the bottom here between porosity, lack of fusion in spots. It's pretty bad. It's actually worse than I thought it was gonna be. So, now we're gonna take a piece and properly clean it and show you the difference. Now, I'm actually gonna use the same pieces so we keep everything similar. I'm gonna clean these up. The first way to do it is by mechanical means with the help of some power. Flat disc, grinding wheel, get all the scale off, and get it down to sound metal. Sanding part is done. Because TIG welding has to be super clean, I am also going to take some chemicals and clean this up. I have here pure acetone. Now the acetone will not break down oxides or rust but it will get all or any of the dust and debris that is sitting on top. Some of the sanding pad that wears off could lay on here. Um, any dust in the air, stuff like that. The cleaner the better. Oh yeah, and that smells like glory. Okay. That there are two pieces of clean metal that I can now join into one. And I'm gonna fit this up, burn my T to take 200 P back here and fit it up and weld it out again. It is also important 
to clean your filler metal off too because your filler metal sitting by your bench will collect a lot of dust and debris. You see the difference here? I can see everything that's going on in this puddle. Matter of fact, I got a little bit of underfill right here. But ignoring all that, there's no dirt sitting on the top. No shiny spots. No porosity. Let's see if I can break this one off and see what's underneath this one. Oh. Well, you can see the difference already. I go to break that thing off and it starts bending the metal. That went in a lot better. I don't see any porosity. That color change is from me breaking the weld open while it was still very hot. And of course, as you can see, trying to break that one apart, that little weld bent this piece of eighth inch plate. But you can see a very clear difference. You can see a very clear difference. Well, as you can tell, there's quite a difference between the two. Floating on dirty metal might look good. It might look like you get away with it. But then you break that weld apart, and the strength and clarity of the weld, it's quite clear which one's stronger. The dirty one up here, I didn't have to bend the metal up in order to get it to break. And there was all sorts of porosity, lack of fusion, and all sorts of other things. This one ended up being nice and clean. I didn't see any lack of fusion, absolutely zero porosity, and the same size weld was strong enough to bend this when I went to break it. Telling me a clear difference in tensile and shear strength. So clean your metal. So thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to see more content like this. Leave a comment of what you think. Well, I'll see you later.